enjoying some fresh air, some downtime, and it's well deserved. He's going to be there for a week and a half, I think. And uh, y'all are stuck with me for today and through next Sunday. So pray for me. Um, as I was preparing, uh, as I was preparing for what message God had for this church today. And it's just as much a message for me as it is for anyone else sitting out there. I was, I was thinking, I, I had something else in mind. and um, I was like, God, is this what you want? And God said, no. And uh, it, it's one of those things where He uses the words of another to guide you where He wants you to go. And I was I was speaking to a family member. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna call him out, my sister, but she's not in here, so I can't embarrass her. Miss that one. But I was talking to her, and we were talking about fear, talking about being afraid of the unknown, the future. What does it hold? And I was like, God spoke to me, and he's he's like, this is this is what I want you to talk about, not about fear in general but about how to overcome that fear. So this morning we're going to be looking at Joshua 1, and I love I love this passage. Uh, Joshua 1.9 has been a favorite verse of mine for years. And uh, it, it's all about, if you, if, if you know it, it's about strength and courage. That's how we stand against fear. So while you're returning there, I want to tell you a story about an Olympic runner. And uh, it, as I was going through illustration, illustration, trying to, to seek God's guidance in this, where, what, putting this thing together, seeking Him, holy, because it's got to be His words, not mine. And I came upon this, and the last part just spoke to me, and I hope it speaks to you. It says the Olympic Games in Mexico, 1968. The marathon is the final event on the program. The Olympic Stadium is packed, and there is an excitement as the first athlete, an Ethiopian runner, enters the stadium. The crowd erupts as he crosses the finish line. But we're not going to talk about the Ethiopian runner. We're going to talk about another runner. Way back in the field is another runner, John Stephen Akwari of Tanzania. He has been eclipsed by the other runners. After 30 kilometers, his head is throbbing, his muscles are aching, and he falls to the ground. He has serious leg injuries, and officials want him to retire, but he refuses. With the knee bandaged, Akwari picks himself up, and he hobbles the remaining 12 kilometers to the finish line. An hour after the winner has finished, Akwari enters the stadium. All but a few thousand of the crowd have gone home. Akwari moves around the track at a painstakingly slow pace until finally he collapses over the finish line. It is one of the most heroic efforts of Olympic history. Afterward, asked by a reporter why he had not dropped out, Ekwari said, My country did not, come, did not send me to start the race. They sent me to finish the race. Through pain, you know he had to have been scared. Is this it? You know, is this the end of my Olympic career? Is this, am I going to finish? Am I going to make it? But he pushes through. And he finishes the race. It didn't matter if he was last. It didn't matter if he was first. But he finished the race. And you know he had to make his people proud. This is... We, we see Joshua here in, in Joshua 1. Uh, the book of the Torah... The, the Torah is the first five books of Pentateuch. the first five books of the Old Testament. Uh, they cover from creation to the end of the story where Moses dies. And Joshua picks up where Joshua picks up. And we're going to see here, Joshua is not starting the race, but he's finishing the race. He's leading the Israelites into the promised land. God didn't call him to start, but he called him to finish. We find Joshua here being commissioned by God to lead his people into the promised land. Moses is dead. Joshua and Caleb are the only two remaining of the original group 
that have left Egypt. They've been wandering the desert for 40 years. Now, if you remember, he, Joshua and Caleb were two of the scouting party that went into the Promised Land when they first got there 40 years before. And they were the only two brave enough to come back and say, we can do this. The rest of them said, let's go back to Egypt. They're too big. They're too strong. We can't do this. Can you imagine, after wandering 40 years, standing on the banks of the River Jordan, you had to have been afraid knowing their failures before not knowing what lay before him on the other side or how the Israelites would act or react once he says it's time to go. This is where we find him. Joshua chapter 1, verses 6 through 9. It says, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore... Arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, into the land that I am giving to them, to the people of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, just as I promised to Moses, from the wilderness of the Lebanon to the as far great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to do according to the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from the right from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray this morning that your spirit would be poured out amongst us here today, that your spirit would penetrate our hearts as we seek to worship you, as we seek to praise you, as we seek to hear a word from you. Lord, I pray that it is not my words this morning, but yours. I pray that if there is a heart here that needs healing, that needs salvation, Lord, that it would hear you, that you stand at the door knocking. Lord, I give you all the glory. and I love you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. So here we see, we see Joshua. He's being commissioned by God to take the people from their camp across the River Jordan. We've got to remember, historically, at this time, the River Jordan was not, it was not some quiet little river that was flowing. It's not like a little creek, you know, where you could just traipse across. Uh, It was actually during spring after the, the... there was a melt, and the river was actually flowing. It was rushing. And here's God telling the, Joshua, take my people across the river into the promised land. He had to have been afraid. I mean, there's just this massive river in front of him. He had to have been afraid. And he had to have been afraid for the fact that he remembered the last time he took some, some positive news to them 40 years before, him and Caleb. And how they reacted. They rejected it. They said, we want to go back to Egypt. We'd be better off dying in the desert. What are you trying to do? But Joshua remembered something. He remembered one thing. He remembered that God kept his promises. If you look in verse 6, it says, Be strong and courageous, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers to give them. God promised to make Abraham a great nation. He promised to give him a land flowing with milk and honey. God's promises are not void. They are not empty. God fulfills His word. If he said it, then He will do it. And Isaiah 55.11 says, So shall my word that be... Shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing 
for which I sent. The King James Version says void. It doesn't say empty. Thy word shall not return void. It is not something he's... He's not given lip service. And Joshua knew that. Because he saw everything that God had done previously in the wilderness. He saw how they were fed. He saw how their clothes never wore out. He knew God promised to take care of them and lead them into the promised land. That's why 40 years before, he stood before the Israelites and said, we've got this, we shouldn't be afraid because God is going with us. He's on our side. He wasn't scared because he knew God promised to give them that land. And God honors his his word. He knew God's faithfulness. He knew there was nobody else that could stand before him. Isaiah 43, 2 says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, it doesn't say in here that the Bible... The Bible doesn't say that your life is going to be easy. It doesn't say that your life is not going to be scary. But it does say right here, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. He promises to go with you, church. He promises to go with you when the times are hard. He promises to go with you. His promise will be kept. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He promised that too. He promised He loves you. All of these promises He made, He keeps. Joshua knew that. Jesus promised that He was going to prepare a place for us and that He would come back to take us to be with Him in John 14. He promised to give us the Holy Spirit which now lives us in every believer today in John 14, verses 15 through 17. He promised to be faithful and just give us, just forgive us when we confess our sins in 1 John 1, 9. We were talking about that in Sunday school this morning. Faithful and just forgive us when we confess our sins. It doesn't matter if we slip or stumble. We are His children. He loves us. And I just knocked across. I'm going. <laughs> Woo! Don't punish me for that, Lord. You know. <laughs> but it's important that we know that God's promises are kept. That is who He is. He's a God of His Word. That's how Joshua could be strong and courageous because he knew God kept His promises. So let us not fear, for the God Almighty keeps His promises. The second thing that Joshua noted, that, that the text says, is Joshua was to be obedient. God, kept, God keeps His promises. That's one way we, we should be strong and courageous. We should not fear. But we can stand strong and courageous in our obedience. In verses 7 and 8, it says, Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to do according to the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. Verse 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. And being obedient, Joshua knew that he would be successful. This is important. It is important that we take this word every day with us. This is our guidebook. This is our owner's manual. This is how we walk and live every day. Joshua knew that. That's why Joshua remained faithful when others did not. Even standing around this crowd of Israelites that are shouting, let's go back to Egypt, Joshua still kept his word. He still said, we can do this. We shouldn't be afraid. God promised us this. And he stayed faithful to that. Yeah, the Israelites hadn't had a good track record, have they? Up until this point. And they griped and complained about everything. Food they were eating. Being stuck out in the desert. You know, we'd be better off. Let's go back and be slaves. That sounds like a great idea, don't it? Instead of listening to God and being obedient. Water. Yes. I have some down here, but I appreciate the thought, though. 
is important. Joshua knew it was important to be obedient to the Word because, see, God's Word lights our way just like it was lighting Joshua's way. God's Word also reveals His will. It reveals truth. It keeps us accountable. It keeps us on the right track. God was telling Joshua and telling us today that we are to read His Word. We are to read it. We are to memorize it. We are to pray over it. We are to recite it. We are to consume it. It is everything to us as followers of Jesus. It is our bread. It is our food. I told uh, uh, the church in Mount Olive when I, I went down there last Sunday night and we were going to start picking apart Hebrews. And I said, when you eat something, what do you do? You cut it in small pieces. You chew it. Small pieces. So I, that was my... That was my goal is to, we'll, we'll take Hebrews and we'll start it at chapter 1, verse 1, and we'll, we'll take it a few verses at a time. We didn't make it out of the first verse, but it, it was good. It was blessing. It was edifying. It was everything that God's Word, that God said this Bible would be. It was everything we needed. It equips us for doing God's will. God was telling Joshua to go. He knew what Joshua was going to face. He knew what was on the other side of that river. And it was Joshua's obedience that led them over there. It was Joshua's obedience that made them stand against giants, that made walls fall down, church. We have that power today to make walls fall down. Yet we want to stand back and be afraid can't let anybody know that I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian. I, I can't tell anybody about Jesus. That's not obedience. Joshua did it. Joshua went across the river with the Israelites. Joshua stood at the walls of Jericho. And through his obedience, God knocked the walls down and gave them over to the Israelites because of obedience. God promised that He would, and through Joshua's obedience, He did. Matthew 24, 35 says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. This book, boys and girls, is timeless. My brothers and sisters, this word is never going to fail you. It's never going to lead you the wrong way. It's going to... You want a life change? Open that book and spend some time in the Word. Spend some time in prayer. That will change your life. It will change your life for the better. It's necessary for survival as well. It not only equips us, but it's necessary for survival. Like I said, it's spiritual food. But in obedience to God's Word and knowing God's Word, He blesses us. May not always be monetary blessings. It may not always be material blessings. Sometimes that blessing is realizing what you do have. I can tell you a few years back, sitting in a homeless shelter with my wife and two boys, when you're at the mercy of everyone else and you're told where you can go, when you can go, what you can have to eat, when you can eat, when you're at the you're at somebody else's mercy like that, you would think, oh. It's horrible. Life is horrible. It's terrible. But I remembered the blessings that I have, my wife and children. And most importantly, I had a God that was providing through those people. The world was telling me, you are being restricted. You are being constrained. You can't do this. You can't do this. You can't do what you want. But God, in His mercy, in His grace, and my obedience was providing for my family. He promised to take care of us. I didn't have anything to fear. Nothing. Because my God was with me. And He was taking care of me. And when your kids sit there and say, this doesn't matter, as long as we're together, that's a blessing. So sometimes the blessings aren't material. Sometimes they're not financial. Sometimes they're sitting... <coughs> right there in front of you. So Joshua stayed focused because he knew in order to survive 
that he had to be obedient. He had to keep God's Word at hand all the time. If you, if you read in the, in the Gospels, you, you see Jesus was tempted by Satan. What did God do with each temptation? He recited Scripture. He used it as a weapon to rebuke the one who sought to destroy us. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. You don't need fancy cars. You don't need big homes. You don't need, you don't need millions of dollars. But you need salvation. You need the love of God. You need His blessing on your life. Because the alternative is not a good thing, brothers and sisters. It's not. I tell people sometimes, they're like, well, how are you doing today? And I was like, well, I'm vertical. So that's plus. I was like, well, that's better than the alternative. Well, I don't know. It depends on where you're going to, you know, after you hit the alternative. I know where I'm going. It's going to be better than here. But God told him, God told Joshua in verse 8, He says, never let my word depart from your mouth. He says, meditate on it. Now, we're not talking about some Eastern Indian meditation type thing. Sit. Think. Uh, I tell people i got to chew on it for a little while. And I do that a lot. I've, it's probably taken me three times as long to get through Ezekiel as it really should have because... I get stuck on something and I have to think about it and I have to pray over it and I have to... I've, you, at least I can tell you, I've got books all over my desk and on the floor, you know, commentaries and, and dictionaries because I want to stop. I want to see what it says a little more in depth. That's what we got to do. Pray over the Scripture. If something sticks, if God gives you something, if you're reading Scripture and, and God says, okay, stop here, let's, let's think about this a little bit. Pray over it. Pray it. Say it out loud. Tell it to somebody. Don't let it depart from your mouth. That's what he was telling Joshua to do. Keep it. Keep it as your center, as your focus. Stay focused on me because that's where I am. You find me in there. You will see my character revealed in my word. And it was through Joshua's obedience in doing so. Again, he didn't have to fear. He was strong and courageous. That's what God was telling him. You can be strong and courageous. You can find strength and courage because I keep my promises. You can find strength and courage in obedience to my word. It says, open it. Read it. Meditate on it. Memorize it. Obey it. Obey it. We can read it all day long until we put it into practice. That going to make a difference. I can read a dictionary but unless I actually you know, commit to learning what, how to spell the words or learn what the words mean and put it into practice. I don't know how many times I've used words that don't make sense in the context, but you have to put it into practice. You have to read Scripture and you have to take it and use it. That's what it's for. Joshua knew that. See, you're not alone in this journey either. You're not alone in this journey. You're not out here in life all alone. Joshua knew that as well. God was telling him, I keep my promises. Just obey my word. And you can find strength and the courage because God goes with you. It says in verse 9, Have I not commanded you? This is I love this verse. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened. Do not be frightened. God's telling you, church, you don't have to be scared. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. The word dismayed, it, it means to give up, to feel overcome, to lay down in, in, in fear. That's not what he's telling Joshua. He's telling John, Joshua, you don't have to worry about this. You can go in all the strength and all the courage. Why? The Lord your God is with you wherever you are go. I could have started the sermon out and stopped right there. We don't need fear. 
We have a God who is bigger. We have a God who is mightier. We have a God who is more loving than anything in this world can offer. God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, says He will go with you wherever you go. Imagine Joshua. Just imagine Joshua couldn't help but feel strengthened and encouraged to feel brave to face that overflowing river on into the land of the Canaanites, facing only God knows what. He could go because God went with him. If you remember back in Isaiah when I said, Isaiah 43, verse 2, it says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. God goes with you. God said, I will be with you. When you are alone, I will be there. When you feel tired, I will be there. When you feel all hope is lost, God is right there. You are not alone. All hope is not lost. Remember, He keeps His promises. He's always there. I can't help but ask myself, why? Why would God want to stay with me, a wretched sinner? Because he loves me. He loves you. That's why he stays with you. He walks with you. He walks with you through the waters. He's there with you in the fire when things get hard. When when the bills seem too much and there's you're wondering where your next meal is coming from, brothers and sisters, God is there. He's working. He's providing in some way or some fashion. It may be through someone else. It may be through a church. It may be through some extra work. God's going to work and he's going to provide. You may be, you may feel alone, rejected, abandoned, because that's what the world's telling you. You don't deserve to be loved. God is there. He's there to love you. He's there to walk with you. You don't have to walk in this world in fear. You walk in hope. You walk in strength and you walk in courage. You go into the promised land. The blessings God has for you. Just like Joshua. What does this mean for you and I going into the promised land? It could be anything from going across the street to tell somebody about Jesus. It could mean going to a hospital or to a prison. It could be just you going to God's Word to find Him. Praying a prayer when you feel lost and abandoned. When you feel hopeless. When you feel like you've sinned so much that God would never take you back. He's still there with you. And He's still calling you. Keep my promises. Come back to me. You don't have to go in fear in anything anymore. As a believer in Jesus, go in strength and encourage. Just like Joshua's being told to do. Psalm 23 Verse 4, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For you are with me. We fear nothing because we have a God who has overcome everything. You should fear nothing. You shouldn't fear other people. You shouldn't fear evil. You shouldn't fear death. Because we have a God who gives us strength who gives us courage. He will lift you up, as He said in Isaiah 40, 41.10. He will strengthen you in his own, with His own righteous right hand. He will strengthen you. Strong and courageous by His righteous right hand. Joshua heard this commissioning. Joshua heard this command. He recognized that God kept His promises. He recognized the importance of being obedient. And he recognized that God will go with him when he crosses the River Jordan with the Israelites. What was his response? You look in verse 11. Verse 11 says, Pass through the midst, 
of the camp and command the people, prepare your provisions for with within three days you are to pass over this Jordan to go in and take possession of the land that the Lord your God is giving you to possess. He obeyed. He was going in strength and courage without fear. Because God reminded him, you can go because I go with you. He went, he obeyed, he sought to trust in the Lord to do His will for His life and the life of others. He sought to follow God and to see people saved from this wilderness. Just like this morning, church. He seeks to save you from your wilderness. He seeks to save you from the death and despair that awaits those that are not saved. He seeks to give you life and love and blessings that come along with it. Like Jana testified this morning about her faithful obedience to giving. God blessed her. So I ask you, what are you going to do today, church? Are you living in your life in fear? Gripped with anxiety over what may come? Fear of failure? Fear of rejection? Fear of loneliness? Fear of death? That's not God's command. That's not His commissioning. God's commissioning and His command to Joshua is the same to you. Be strong and courageous. As I keep my promises. Be strong and courageous in your obedience. Be strong and courageous because... I go with you. If you want to leave this fear behind today, if you want this strength and courage today, I invite you this morning to come. Come to this altar. I will be glad, I'll be glad to, to pray with you. I'll be glad to, to share with you the life-giving grace that God is offering right now. God saying, I love you. You don't have to fear anymore. Come to me. Jesus is calling you this morning. I'm going to ask Jana to come up. If you need prayer for anything, if you have something you're struggling with and you just want somebody to pray with you, come, come forward. I will pray with you. We will take it before the throne of grace. We will take it before a God who keeps His Word. A God who is with you through all of this. Whatever you're going through, if you don't know Christ, He is there. He's knocking at the door of your heart this morning. And He is offering this to you. He is saying, I love you. I have been there. I have seen the troubles you have walked through. Let me help you. Let me love you. You're not too far gone. Would you come if you feel led?